town is no big enough of a for two of us. Godzilla blood. 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 So that's the alcoholic uh, beverage that you make every year for G Fest. Um, sort of a red liquid. Tastes kind of like a wine cooler, not bad at all. And it tastes very sweet. You think you're drinking soda pop, but then until you stand up, and it's like whoa. When, what year did you start making Godzilla Blood for these conventions? For these conventions, 1996. And so, yeah, so every year that I've known him, he's mixed up this uh, drink called Godzilla Blood. Now, at this year's G-Fest, we're going to do uh, something a little bit differently. Well, he's still, in, he's still doing his Godzilla Blood, I'm sure, but we're going to do a little something that I like to call Rodin's Urine. Rodin's Urine consists of two parts. Lemon juice. Yummy. Solid lemon juice. Mm mm. David Nunes, what else is in it? And one part pepper. Oh, pepper. One of my favorites. All right. Okay. Needs a little more than that. Yeah, put a little more. Yes, eh? really spice it up with the pepper. Yeah. Oh. Just look at John Grace's mouth watering. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Build it down. It's Mikey. He likes it. <laughs> <laughs> it is super. Oh, it's sour. Let's get going. It's Mike. Don't forget to stir. Oh, I will. <laughs> you will forget to stir? <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, okay, here we go. Rodan's urine coming up. Yeah, real men don't drink that um, Godzilla blood crap. We go for the hardcore stuff. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Mike Keller from Monster Attack Team at GFS enjoying some of Rodan's urine. There you go. <laughs> More. Could be a man. Yeah, I think it'd be uh -huh. take a good shot of it. Wait, try to kill me, man. Mm. Oh, that's good. That's that's as big as I can fucking do, man. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, that's all that's gonna happen, man. <laughs> all right, all right. Let's uh, no, I give it a shot. Have some Rodin's urine. Oh, I was looking for oh. a shot. Spike, here you're cold now. Mm. That's right, I'm right. <laughs> Tastes okay at first, and then. Then it, reaches, yeah. then it reaches the most sensitive taste buds. Uh, I think I need to switch it around in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you like it? Uh, it's better than it's not, it's not as bad as quite as bad as I thought. <laughs> <laughs> it's better than One being shot in the face. Mm. So I can't believe you guys don't have your eyes watering from that stuff. I mean, it's just I, I do a little. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> that's, the yeah. that's the best. That's the best road dance urine that Noah has ever drunken, or is it drinking? Yeah, drink Drink or drunk. drunk. Drink it, drunk. And, oh, and the first one, I highly recommend. recommend it. Yes, George, go for it. <laughs> wow, needs more pepper. <laughs> more pepper. <laughs> <laughs> Not spicy enough, huh? <laughs> Needs more urine. <laughs> okay, let's put some more uh, some more lemon in here and, and okay. Put more put more mm. pepper in there. What if you guys have like we need the new herbs? Oh 
This is what's missing. Oh, okay. Stir it up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Who else makes your piss? I'll have some Moran urine. Yeah. You guys didn't see that promise, but it's not as bad as I thought. I see. <laughs> well, we have to have some water. Oh, how you guys? <laughs> we lied. <laughs> I haven't had it since they take you out. Mmm, so. <laughs> chug it all. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh, that's, a great, that's a great thing. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna. Oh, oh, oh what's more pepper? <laughs> oh, I don't know how you guys can drink some straight face and hold that. Here's the cheap best. Thank you, JD. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. oh. <laughs> That good, huh? Oh, oh, God! Oh, oh damn! Oh. Ooh. Oh, matter of kind you. Hey. <laughs> I'm a media. Oh, that's the best rodent. Oh. Oh, fuck! Oh, stinks! If all these guys could take it, what's your problem? Man, you must have real sensitive taste buds. Oh. <laughs> okay, cut. Oh. Oh. Here I am celebrating my birthday at Key Largo, Florida because of the warm tropical water and sunny climate. I think Florida is my favorite part of the continental United States. One of the things I packed for this vacation is an old VHS tape of the Japanese fantasy movie Latitude Zero. All you trendy geeks and purists can have your DVDs, Blu-rays, torrent, downloads, and other high-def things, but I still have a version of this Toho film that I recorded off of syndicated TV over 30 years ago. The tracking imperfections and grainy rapid ear technology are part of the nostalgia. Not only has this American-made videotape outlasted countless Japanese videotapes, but so has a personal label I made in the early 1980s that all my tapes had. I got so sick of lending out tapes of Japanese TV shows to friends who took undue credit and lent my tapes out to third parties. Anyway, the reason we're reviewing this 1969 Shiro Honda directorial in the Florida Keys is because of Latitude Zero's underwater setting. I came here to spend the night at the pricey yet exotic Jewel's Underwater Lodge. Since I'll be renting an aquatic room, I figure I should bring a movie that also has an aquatic setting. So I figured Latitude Zero is the perfect movie to watch and review during my first ever night under the sea. So after spending over a thousand bucks, we sign waivers, put our luggage in waterproof suitcases, get a security briefing, leave things in lockers on dry land, and get a tour of the surface entrance. There's equipment, 24-hour monitoring of the submerged cottage, control paddles and consoles, pressure gauges, air circulation devices, and a life support system. Okay, here I am at Jules Underwater Hotel. Actually, I'm not underwater right now, but the hotel is right over there, under the water. It's 20 feet under the water. That's where those bubbles are. It's really fun being down there. There's a nurse shark and uh, lots of fish, and uh, we can feed the fish and spend the night underwater. We can sleep underwater. We can watch a movie there. It's here in Key Largo, Florida. It's a very unusual vacation. I think this is the only underwater lodge in the world, if I'm not mistaken. But this is how I'm spending my birthday. I'm becoming a year older underwater this year. As I packed up this Tomoyuki Tanaka production into my underwater suitcase, it seemed so natural because it was only because of movies such as Latitude Zero, Godzilla vs. the Sea Monster, Terror Beneath the Sea, and other B-movies that I really got into scuba diving, snorkeling, free diving, uh, surfing, swimming, and other oceanic activities. So this is as close as it comes for me to actually being in a monster movie such as Latitude Zero. 
spend the night underwater at Jules Undersea Lodge in Key Largo, getting ready to watch Latitude Zero. Okay, there are at least two different back issues of OC that reviewed Latitude Zero. One was OC number 10, the giant Titans issue, and the other one was OC number 8, the Japanese science fiction issue. Now, in both cases, it's the same review written by Christopher Elam or Chris Elam, whatever his name is called or pronounced. Before I get to his review, let me just say that I pretty much agree with everything he had to say. I really enjoyed Latitude Zero. Um, I thought the lion was really fake looking and really stupid and the bird looked pretty bad too. Um, the giant bat monsters looked okay. The rats were all right and the movie is so energetic and over the top that at times it plays almost like a superhero movie. And it's one of those rarest of Japanese fantasy sci-fi movies, one that was never dubbed into English, because amazingly they shot the whole thing in English. So we get to hear Akira Takarada speaking English. DSL stands for Deep Scattering Layer. And we get to hear a couple of the actresses trying to speak English, but they don't do it very well. Your wish is a command, my lord. But the worst English speaker of all in the film, I think, is Akihiko Hirata. Everything is near normal, you see? The cranial blues are already here. I'm really glad I brought the VHS tape of Latitude Zero down here to Jules Undersea Lodge, also known as Jules Underwater Lodge, whatever. But I'm glad I brought it because there's not a lot of other stuff to watch here. At night, uh, there's no reception on the TV. I was not expecting good reception, and sure enough, there was not. After all, we are at least 20 feet underwater. Um, the only movies they had was some Tom Hanks movie and some old black and white silent film. And so luckily, uh, by bringing Letter to Zero, I was able to pass the time and read my first ever movie review underwater. All right, the review in OC, as written by Christopher Elam, is... Excitement abounds in this fast-paced adventure, Toho in 1969. Science Scientists are rescued by a submarine from a utopian civilization and help save the world from a megalomaniac. No, not Damon Foster. Hey! Some of the effects look a little rushed, but it doesn't damage the movie. Notable as the only Toho sci-fi film released to America with no dubbing at all. It was all filmed in English. Director Ishiro Honda starring Joseph Cotton, Susan Romero, Richard Jekyll, Akira Takarada, and Masumi Okada. Rating is four and a half stars. And I agree. Hotel room at G Fest. We're getting ready to sneak up on Mike Keller. I've known him for since the early 90s, codenamed Muskrat. And he always warned me about his uh, snoring, but it's getting worse over the years and it's pretty damn loud. So we're going to try to sneak up on him and just goof on him for a second. I've known a lot of snorers in my time, including myself, but this guy, I can hear him from across the room. You can probably even hear him on the video. This guy's so we're is like of, co so of Kobe proportion. So I'm going to bring a. Bring a sound source up to record his snoring. So, 